Morning Scoot fam, Mike, COE at New Scooters for Less. I got Brad, trusty service manager here. Today we're gonna show you how to replace a carburetor and fuel line on a Wolf RX-50. All right guys, so we're about to remove our carburetor. Um, we're actually at an open point right now. Just to get to this point, you just have to remove the seat bucket. It's five 10 millimeter bolts, um, as well as the little front panel here that sits in front of your knees. That is gonna be two Phillips head screwdrivers, and then it pulls right off. So now we've got the scooter up, open, and now we're, we have the carburetor exposed right here. In order to remove the throttle line off of it, you need two 12 millimeter wrenches, which I have right here, and that'll help you loosen these uh, nuts on the actual cable. We'll go ahead and do that. Once you got one loose, I like to, there's one on the inside, I like to just thread that all the way off to the cable. And then once you have that off, you should be able just to pull the cable straight back. And then there's enough room to release the cable through the little opening. And then follow the cable around and just pop it right off. Okay. So that's loose now. Just try to get that out of the way. Just kind of move it towards the back here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the intake manifold and the air box screws. Two Phillips head screwdrivers there. I'm going to use my drill gun but a screwdriver will work just as good. Get those nice and loose. This one should pop right off the back, and then you should be able to work the carburetor backwards. Now the carb's free, except it's still hooked up to our fuel line our, uh, and the uh, automatic choke. So most of the time, um, the automatic choke plugs in into like a bag area and it's going to be zip tied closed for due to moisture trying to keep the moisture out so you have to clip these little zip ties off all right so let me just follow my choke line which is right here it's just a little clip to unrelease and then just go ahead and pop the fuel line off so the carb should be free now. I'll go ahead and install the wheel. Uh, most of the time you'll replace the carb either because the scooter's been sitting too long. A lot of times the little jets inside the carb just can't get the gas to free flow. Um, if the scooter sits, one of the properties of the gas it wants to really gum up, so it struggles to get through. And apart from actually just taking the entire part, carb apart and cleaning it with like a solvent, like a brake cleaner or a carb type cleaner, um, the best thing to do on a Chinese scooter, it's pretty inexpensive just to go ahead and replace it versus paying an hour's worth of labor to actually clean it. Cool. All right, so before we actually install this new carburetor, um, I want to replace the fuel lines that hook up to it as well. Usually we like to go work backwards. So from what's going into the motor, anytime you're dealing with fuel work, it's good to replace the carburetor and anything that touches the carburetor, meaning the gas flow from where it begins to where it ends. So if we're ending with the carburetor, I like to work backwards, replace the fuel lines, the vacuum line, these both tend to get brittle over time because they're just a little bit of rubber, and then obviously the tank if that's needed. Um, so here we go. Basically the vacuum line's the thinner tube. You can just pop that off the intake manifold and then it hooks up on the bottom nipple of the actual fuel valve. So we can just pull that off. They tend to get pretty hard. And then we'll do the fuel valve, fuel, fuel line as well. And it just pops off. Um, this is your fuel filter. So you do want to cut the fuel line in a couple places and to install a new fuel filter. It does have flow direction, so make sure you don't install that guy upside down. Otherwise, you won't get your fuel through there. Um, I tend to actually cut my fuel line a little bit longer, so I can make sure I've got plenty of room and I want the filter where I need it. So, just go ahead and put the filter in one end. Make sure it's facing the right way. And then you can button up the other end to the actual fuel uh, valve underneath the tank. And the fuel valve is actually, there's one, two ports that you can actually hook onto. It's the one on the top. The bottom one piece is the vacuum line. All right. And just kind of 
about that in. Gonna add my extra fuel line here. Don't need much more, so I'll just shorten that. That's ready to go into the carb. I'll grab the vacuum line now. It's a little bit thinner hose. Um, so the type of vac size on the vacuum and fuel line is um, 3 16 for your fuel line and 5 30 seconds on the vacuum line. And the biggest thing is whenever you're installing this, make sure the fresh piece is nice and um, pliable. You know, what am I trying to say? Pliable. Pliable. That's the word I would use. <laughs> nice and uh, squishy. <laughs> I don't know. Got <laughs> You don't want it to be nice and hard. If it's hard, it's gonna. It's more likely to 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 dry rot sooner. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the bottom of the the bottom port coming off on the fuel valve. Sneak your hands in there. All right, and then it's just measuring distance again. Again, here's where we're end up, gonna end up being on this port here on the intake manifold. So I like to route them to the side. And then I actually have the vacuum line coming under the airbox tube. Trying to keep it out of the way. This little clip hole here is made to kind of remove that out of the way, away from the carburetor so it doesn't get pinched. If this line's ever getting squished, it's going to restrict airflow and most likely stall out the scooter. That's kind of what you want to definitely want to make sure it's nice and free. Okay. Got a good distance there, I'll go ahead and cut it. And hook that up to the vacuum port. There we go. So vacuum line's in, fuel line's ready to be connected. Now it's time to install the carb, finish it up. All right, so on a new carb, most of the time you have this little plastic piece. That's where the air box tube is gonna hook up to. So just pop that off. Again, there's our choke. This is the carb drain, so just let that hang out of the scooter. You can shorten it if you need to. A lot of people ask what this tube is all the time. It's nothing super important, just so you don't um, leak gas anywhere. If it's leaking out of the bottom of the carb, it'll drop right onto the ground. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and get that up first, and then we'll reattach the throttle cable. So I like to put the top, the front, into the intake manifold first. Get that nice and snug. And then the back piece kind of just pops right onto the, uh, that opening again. And then it's all about finding the screws, get the screw right in the right spot, and then we'll tighten it up. Again, here's my choke. I'm going to route it to the other side just to get it out of my way. Now having creating openings and gaps inside the manifolds, I mean, that's going to create air getting in, and a lot of times too much air is going to stall out the scooter. If it's not getting air, it's going to stall it out. So making sure these are nice and tight for sure is one big mistake that happens a lot. Even if someone just said they tried replacing their carb and they come in. One of the things I see a lot is they just didn't get it tight or, or they're getting this vacuum line pinched by either the carb itself or just um, it's poorly routed so it's constantly getting restricted airflow. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind for sure and when replacing the fuel line and the vac lines is make sure they're not getting squished or pinched, um, especially when you go to put the seat back. So make sure, that's why I really like to route them underneath the carb or underneath the airbox tube um, to try and prevent that. Because as soon as you put that seat on, a lot of, you know, someone sits on it, that's 100 more pounds, 150, maybe 200 pounds of pressure um, getting crushed there. And if that happens, you're just gonna be very frustrated with a scooter that's not working for you. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my choke line again. Just gotta find the actual plug in. And then go ahead and try and cover up this, these uh, connectors really well, as much as you can with this plastic uh, rubber bag. And then I like to zip tie it closed just to keep any moisture out. Anytime your connectors are getting hit with moisture, they're more likely to become brittle and get cracked and, and come unplugged and all that kind of stuff. And then a lot of times on this bag, there's a little hole that you can find that's already pre-made. If not, I just take a screwdriver or a little puncture and puncture a little hole so I can zip tie this around the wires. When you get it nice and tight, you can go ahead and clip the end of the zip tie. Keep your work nice and neat. And then another one you can actually 
get this away from your throttle cable because you don't want this to get caught anywhere. I like to put that on the frame itself. And then on this side is straight where that plugs back in. Sometimes you'll have a little uh, rubber tube blocking it for protection. Just remove that and slide the fuel line right on. The last final step here is to go ahead and hook that throttle cable back up and then should be able to fire the sucker up again. So again, we'll grab that, that throttle line. It's gonna, I put it right over the top of the air box now because you have all the fuel lines and back lines underneath. Um, just get to find the end point. Come back here. It's gonna slip right into this. And then you're gonna follow it around it, around the world on the bottom here, where it's pulling it. Slip the wire inside the slot that, where that hole's gonna be for the threads. And it should slide right in. And then take that nut that came off on the wire and just rotate it all the way back to secure it in place. Once it starts getting tight, you can test it to make sure your throttle cable is hooked up right. I pull on the handle. That one's working nicely. Now just tighten it up. I just want it nice and snug. All right, we are finished. So don't, for, so don't forget, anytime you replace anything fuel related and you're blowing out the carburetor or you're replacing a new carburetor on the bike, the, um, the gas still has to get down into the carburetor from the fuel tank. So if you're sitting here pushing your, your start button and it's not starting right away, that's perfectly normal because it's the airflow that it's sucking in is pushing the gas exactly where it needs to go. Um, but that's going to take a quick minute in order to get in there. So if you're just sitting here listening to a chug, just be patient and it'll eventually turn up. All right, so whether you've got a scooter that's been sitting for a while and it got a gunked up car, maybe you're putting a performance carb on there, maybe you let a friend borrow it and they put the wrong type of gas, this video will help you uh, determine the ways to properly replace your carburetor as well as your fuel line and fuel filters. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach us at service at nsfrl.com. You can pick up the phone and call us at 352-336-1271 or watch any more of our vlogs and how-to videos at nsfrl.tv. Until next time, we'll see you then. See you later. Look at this!